A knight in armour and his horse go together like eggs and bacon. But what was the relationship between the man and the beast? How did they work together and how did they train? I've been riding horses since I was eight years old and I've been training them since I was a teenager. So I have some experience about training of horses, but it's only recently, only in the last decade of my life that I've been interested in the, the kind of medieval side of it, trying to rediscover some of the techniques. And what I've found is kind of interesting. We, we think of dressage as a horse sport that is very specifically about horse dancing and horse maneuvering, but in fact, the origins of dressage go back to war training. You need to move your horse sideways to strike a target. You need to be able to go forwards, you need to be able to go backwards, and you need to be able to maneuver very, very well. Basically, dressage is the art of maneuvering your horse well. I loved animals since I, was, I can remember, and horses and dogs of particular affection in my life. And the idea of being able to work with an animal, rather than just having it as a companion, but also having it as something that you can do something with. You can travel, you can share experiences, you can do show jumping, you can do cross country, you can go for long rides. That has always appealed to me. And the medieval side of it was, was relatively unknown. I didn't know anybody that was interested in uncovering the secrets of the past when it comes to that. So I read a series of books called the Silver Brumby series, which are all about wild horses in Australia. And as a result of that, I fell in love with the idea of horses. And unusually for a young man, I suppose, I pony club and I joined all the sort of things. And the, basically it was mostly a female sport, mostly a girl sport. And I was one of the few blokes actually riding a pony club. I won best boy two years in a row out of a field of three. I was lucky enough to have horses in my life. I had a couple of horses and I competed at quite a high level. It was also reasonably academic and I was fascinated by biology and evolution and all those kind of aspects of, of things. And I managed to win a place at Oxford University to study zoology. Uh, that was my area of speciality was the animal kingdom and I loved it. I loved natural history programs. I loved the natural world in general, but I also loved animal behaviour. And animal behaviour is a very interesting area. You need to watch animals, you need to almost observe them for hundreds of hours to actually see the subtle movements. Horses communicate to each other by body language, by posture, by approach, the shape of their ears, the shape of their nostrils, the shape of their eyes. And if you're not with a horse for a long time, you, you don't see these symbols, you don't recognise them. I can look at somebody riding a horse and I can say whether the horse is paying attention to the rider or paying attention to something else. And I can watch a movie and I can watch actors riding and you can see that the horse is a bit unsure of the rider on its back. Or in some cases you can see that the rider is very good and the horse is very relaxed. So for me, observation and scientific experimentation are a really important part of uncovering the past. Next time, I'm going to introduce you to my horses, show you what they can do and how they fit it into the medieval world. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.